Hey guys, this is Monica at Academic Phoenix Plus, and today I wanted to show you how to deform your object so that you can accelerate your modeling. Maya has some a lot of great tools that you can use to deform your geometry pretty quickly, and you can use these for rigging, and you can also use them for modeling to help your workflow go faster. Let's go under Deform, Nonlinear, and you're going to see that there's a couple of options here. And the first one we're going to look at is bend. Now, what happens is if you go to your Windows Outliner, you're going to see that you have your mesh and you also have a bend handle. So when you select a handle, I can actually move this and you can actually see it. So I'm going to go ahead and undo. And what I really want to look at is over here in the inputs. And under bend, if you click that, you're going to see something called curvature. So if I middle mouse and drag onto the perspective, you're going to see that it actually bent. So if you select it all the way across, you can actually make this little loop. By the way, over here, you can just type in 180 and you will get a 180 degree bend. And let's take a look at what low bound is. So low bound is actually controls the low part of the bend and the high bound does the same thing. So that gives you actually a lot of control when it comes to creating shapes. Another thing to remember is that you don't, you actually can move the bend handle. So don't limit yourself. You can always rotate this to the correct angle. I use this method when I did the, the tires. So when I modeled the tires, I created the treads and then I used the bend deformer to actually revolve my tire. So take a look at that tutorial. I think it would be really helpful. If you want to uh, keep this deformation, you just have to select your mesh, go to edit, delete by type history, and this will become permanent. It. If you don't like it, I'm undoing, select the bend deformer and press delete. And now it's back to its original shape. So let's take a look at something else. So deform nonlinear flare. Let's go ahead and take a look at that. So again, this time you're going to see a different type of icon on here. Again, we're going to open up the inputs and you're going to see that there is a curve. And you can see that I can actually give it a little twist or a little flare. Now, same thing over here, low bound. You can actually decrease it or increase it really depends what you want to do and same thing with the high bound. Now I always recommend that you just kind of play around with this so you can see that there's a lot of really fun things you can do with this and uh, it's really up to you what type of tool you want to use. Some people like to use this for um, animating squash and stretch. It's kind of fun. Alright, I'm going to go ahead and grab the flare, delete that, select the mesh again, go to deform nonlinear sign. Again if I move this you can see it's just a line However, when I go to the inputs, I have this thing called an amplitude. If you guys know anything about the sine curve, you can actually deform your object to look like sine. Over here, we have a wavelength of 2. 1, 2. So if I want to increase that wavelength, whee, I can make it really crazy, or I can just kind of calm it down a little bit. Same thing, you can actually move the sine curve around, and of you can do a little bit of a drop off. And of course, the low bound and the high bound. Now, why would you want to use this? Well, it really depends if you're trying to maybe do an ad for music. Anything you see in Maya can be keyframed. So for example, if I really wanted to keyframe this, let me go ahead and just uh, kind of calm it down a little bit. Make this a little bit more, I need more mesh, that's why it's breaking. But uh, if I wanted to, for example, keyframe this, you just have to select this, right click, key selected, move on to my next one, select offset, move it a little bit, right click, key selected, and you can actually make this happen. Pretty cool. Did you think that you were going to learn how to animate? Just in case you don't know what that is, that's whenever you see this red mark, that means that it's been keyframed. And you can see the keyframe on the timeline over here as well. If you need to break this connection, it's really pretty easy. You can actually go, uh, delete these frames individually. So you can always select the frame, right click, and do delete. Or my favorite is select this offset, right click, break connection. There it is. So now you can see that it's no longer red and it's no longer animated. Alright, that was a little troubleshooting on animation. Let's go ahead and delete the sine curve and let's take a look at another one. Deform, nonlinear. This time is going to be squash. Um, as you can imagine, this is going to look like squash and stretch, squash, or also known as squash. So um, I've actually used this for creating squash and stretch, especially a sphere and it's actually pretty neat. A lot of people actually use the squash and stretch to animate like squashed heads, all sorts of interesting things. So it's actually pretty fun if you want to mess around. Expand, so how far do you want this thing to go? You can break it, be careful. You can also control where the squash is going to be, so that's pretty neat. Got a little bit of start smooth and end smoothness, and of course the low bound and the high bound. And all of this can be keyframed, which is awesome. Alright, I'm going to grab the squash handle, delete it, one more time, select this, deform nonlinear twist. As you can imagine, I don't think it takes a rocket scientist to figure this part out, but you actually get to 
twist. I'm going to go ahead and turn on the wireframe so you can see what it looks like. We have a start angle and you can see that I'm actually twisting the geometry and of course we have an end angle which twists this one as well. So if I increase the twist you're going to see that it actually twists the geometry. Let me turn off that and now you have a twist. Now you can add more if you want to just because you are limited here doesn't mean that you can't just go ahead and type numbers in sometimes it will let you sometimes it won't but if you want to push it a little further you can always twist and then you can get a really neat looking piece of geometry now obviously when you're twisting you might want to add more geometry so it doesn't break like it is right now but uh, but you can twist your geometry so delete the twist select your mesh go to deform nonlinear wave alright it's a different looking icon we're gonna go to wave go to amplitude first and you can see that not much is going on here right well let's go ahead and we can either twist this object around whoa, or we can actually rotate the model itself which is very handy so again you can animate this if you want to make it some abstract art um, you have very similar things of, of offsetting like the sign, but you can see that it actually follows a wave here. You've got the drop off and drop off position and the min and max radius. So, well, that's a really quick tutorial on how to make a very simple pole turn into any shape that you want. So there's actually a lot of options you can use for the deformer. Hopefully that was helpful. Don't forget to uh, subscribe to my channel. If there's anything you guys want to see or learn or anything, just leave a comment and I would love to hear from you. Don't forget to check out my website. It's academicphoenixplus.com. There you can find some free downloads and some extra things just for you. Thank you everybody for your support. I will see you next time.